Imagine a world where smallpox still raged, where polio paralyzed thousands of children each year, and where measles swept through communities unchecked. Thanks to one of the greatest breakthroughs in medicine, immunization, that world is now largely history. The story begins in 1796. Edward Jenner inoculated a young boy with cowpox, proving immunity against deadly smallpox. Just two years later, the first smallpox vaccine was born. By 1979, Immunization had achieved what once seemed impossible, the global eradication of smallpox. So what exactly is a vaccine? At its core, a vaccine is a carefully crafted training program for your immune system, teaching it to recognize and fight off dangerous invaders before they can do harm. Vaccines introduce the body to antigens, safe pieces of the microbe such as proteins or inactivated toxins. Your immune system learns to recognize them, building antibodies and memory T cells. So if the real infection arrives, your body reacts faster, stronger, and smarter. Without vaccination, that first exposure could prove deadly. Your immune system often needs too much time to mount a defense. The stars of this battle? B lymphocytes that make antibodies and T lymphocytes that coordinate and kill infected cells. Together, they form the memory that makes vaccines powerful. First responders, called macrophages, Swallow invaders, break them down, and display fragments using molecular billboards called MHC complexes. This sparks the immune cascade, cytokines, interferons, and a powerful chain reaction. The latest innovation? mRNA vaccines. Instead of delivering the antigen directly, they give your cells the recipe. Wrapped in lipid nanoparticles, the mRNA teaches ribosomes to build harmless viral proteins, like the spike protein of COVID-19, which then trains your immune system. The immune response produces an arsenal of antibodies, neutralizers that block viruses, lysins that punch holes in bacteria, and antitoxins that disable dangerous toxins. Over time, your body shifts from short-lived IgM antibodies to long-lasting IgG, your permanent defense force. Vaccines come in many forms, live attenuated vaccines like measles and mumps, inactivated vaccines, subunit vaccines, and toxoids like tetanus. Each uses a different strategy, but the goal is always the same, protection. Childhood vaccines protect against a wide array of diseases, from polio and whooping cough to measles and chickenpox. The schedule varies by country, but the mission is universal, protect the next generation. Adults need protection too, yearly flu shots, tetanus boosters, and vaccines for measles, mumps, rubella, HPV, hepatitis, and more. College dorms, military barracks, and hospitals highlight the importance of immunization in group settings. In some cases, people receive passive immunization, preformed antibodies given directly, offering immediate but temporary protection. This can save lives in cases like rabies exposure or in people who cannot produce antibodies themselves. Contraindications to vaccines are rare, but live vaccines should be avoided in pregnant women or the severely immunocompromised. Allergies to specific components also require caution. Most side effects are mild, soreness, fatigue, or fever, signs your immune system is working. Rarely, more serious reactions can occur, like anaphylaxis or Guillain-Barre syndrome. But these risks are far smaller than the risks posed by the diseases themselves. Yet, as anti-vaccination movements gain traction, once-defeated diseases resurface. Measles outbreaks, for example, remind us that public trust in vaccines is as vital as the science itself. One challenge is missed doses, whether from forgotten appointments or lack of awareness. Reminder systems have proven powerful in boosting compliance and keeping communities protected. Immunization is not just personal, it's collective. Each vaccinated person strengthens the shield around the vulnerable, newborns, the elderly, and the immunocompromised through herd immunity. From Jenner's cowpox experiment to cutting edge mRNA vaccines, immunization stands as one of humanity's greatest triumphs. It is a shield forged by science protecting us all. Stay informed, stay protected, talk to your healthcare provider about vaccines recommended for you and your family. Together, we safeguard the future. How can a few drops of liquid, or a small injection, transform your immune system into a disease-fighting powerhouse? Vaccines are among the greatest achievements in medicine, and today, we uncover the intricate science of how they work. A vaccine is a biological tool designed to safely train your body's defenses. It contains antigens, small parts of a pathogen or lab-made mimics,
that teach your immune system to recognize danger before the real threat appears. Antigens can be proteins, toxins, or sugars that act as red flags to the immune system. Think of them as wanted posters, molecular signals that help your body identify an invader. Some antigens are made of sugars, polysaccharides. Vaccines against pneumonia and meningitis use these to target bacteria like streptococcus pneumonia, saving millions of lives every year. The success of a vaccine is measured in clinical trials, not just by lab results but by real-world outcomes, preventing infections, reducing severity, and cutting hospitalizations. Vaccines fall into two main categories, live attenuated, which use weakened forms of microbes, and non-live, which use killed organisms or fragments. Both strategies prepare the immune system for battle. In recent decades, new vaccine platforms have emerged. Viral vectors, mRNA and DNA vaccines, and virus-like particles, pushing the boundaries of science and speed, as seen with the COVID-19 vaccines. Live attenuated vaccines replicate just enough to spark immunity, but not cause illness. Examples include measles, mumps, rubella, and TB. They're powerful, but must be avoided in people with weak immune systems, where even a mild strain can be dangerous. Sometimes live vaccines can cause mild symptoms, a rash after measles or fever in one out of seven children. But these are far safer than the full-blown disease. Non-live vaccines take a different approach, using killed organisms, purified proteins, or harmless versions of toxins. Examples include tetanus, hepatitis B, and pneumococcal vaccines. Toxoid vaccines, like tetanus and diphtheria, train your immune system to neutralize dangerous bacterial toxins, which can be deadlier than the bacteria themselves. Many vaccines include adjuvants, molecules that supercharge the immune response. For 80 years, aluminum salts, or alum, have been widely used. Newer adjuvants, like MF59 and AS01, provide danger signals that awaken the body's first line of defense. Vaccines also contain stabilizers, preservatives and emulsifiers to keep them safe and effective. Trace amounts of substances like gelatin or egg protein may remain, but these have been studied extensively, with risks limited only to rare allergies. Once injected, vaccine antigens are captured by dendritic cells, the generals of the immune army. Activated by adjuvants, they migrate to lymph nodes, ready to train T and B cells. In the lymph node, dendritic cells display antigens on MHC molecules activating T cells. Meanwhile, B cells detect soluble antigens directly, together forming the backbone of adaptive immunity. Activated T helper cells guide B cells to mature into plasma cells, factories that churn out antibodies. Within two weeks, antibody levels spike, providing early protection. But the true power of vaccination lies in memory. Long-lived plasma cells reside in the bone marrow, producing antibodies for decades, while memory B and T cells stand ready to respond at lightning speed. CD8 plus cytotoxic T cells hunt and destroy infected cells. In reinfection, memory CD8 plus cells multiply rapidly, acting as assassins to stop the pathogen before it spreads. Not all immunity is built. Sometimes it's borrowed, like maternal antibodies pass through the placenta, protecting newborns in the first months of life. Vaccinating mothers with tetanus or pertussis boosts this natural shield. Immunization extends beyond individuals. When enough people are vaccinated, pathogens struggle to spread, protecting infants, the elderly, and the immunocompromised. This is herd immunity. Some vaccines even provide nonspecific effects, training the innate immune system to respond more strongly to unrelated infections. Scientists are still uncovering these fascinating benefits. Every vaccine dose protects not only the recipient, but their entire community. The ripple effect of immunization is one of humanity's most powerful tools in reducing disease worldwide. From antigens and adjuvants to memory cells and herd immunity, vaccines are more than medicine. They are shields of hope, forged through centuries of science. Stay informed, stay protected. Talk to your healthcare provider about the vaccines recommended for you and your family. Together, we protect the future. What if vaccines could be tailored, built uniquely for your body, to fight not just infections, but cancer itself? The future of personalized cancer vaccines is closer than you think. High throughput technologies and big data analytics are reshaping vaccine science. Using transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics, researchers can map the immune system at cellular and molecular detail. Artificial intelligence now predicts antigen targets and optimizes vaccine design with astonishing precision. Immuno-oncology has already revolutionized cancer care, 
Immune Checkpoint Inhibitors, or ICIs, have improved survival in many patients by unleashing T-cells that attack tumors. Studying these responses revealed tumor-reactive T-cells powerful enough to reject cancers, rekindling hope for cancer vaccines. Key to this vision are dendritic cells, nature's ultimate adjuvant. They capture tumor antigens, carry them to lymph nodes, and train naive T-cells to recognize and kill cancer cells. Their role has fueled a renaissance in cancer vaccine research. This process is known as the cancer immunity cycle. Dendritic cells activate T-cells, which attack tumors, releasing more antigens, which feed back into the cycle, perpetuating a powerful immune assault on cancer. Dendritic cells exist in specialized subsets. CDC1 cells excel at cross-presenting tumor antigens to CD8 plus killer T-cells, while CDC2 cells are more diverse, often priming CD4 plus helper T-cells. Together, they orchestrate both cytotoxic and helper responses. CDC1 cells are rare but essential. Tumors often suppress or exclude them, and patients with higher CDC1 levels have significantly better survival. Their presence is a powerful predictor of treatment success. CDC2 cells are more heterogeneous. In some contexts, they support tumor immunity. In others, they resemble monocyte-derived cells with mixed functions. Under the right signals, they may even cross-present antigens like CDC1, opening new therapeutic possibilities. Intratumoral dendritic cells don't just prime new T-cells, they sustain memory and effector T-cell populations within the tumor itself. By producing interleukin-12, they enhance chemotherapy and immunotherapy responses. Specialized dendritic cells marked by CCR7 cluster near tumor blood vessels. There, they recruit T-cells with CXCL16 and sustain them with interleukin-15. These dendritic cell niches create hotspots of anti-tumor immunity. These niches often form DC, CD4, CD8 triads, three cell partnerships that restore exhausted T cells, reinvigorating them to fight. Harnessing these triads may hold the key to improving checkpoint inhibitor therapy. The most exciting frontier? Personalized cancer vaccines built from neoantigens, mutations unique to each patient's tumor. By sequencing both normal and tumor DNA, scientists can identify mutations, predict epitopes, and design custom vaccines. Early experiments in mice proved the concept, generating vaccines that shrank tumors. Clinical trials in melanoma patients followed, where vaccines expanded tumor-specific T-cells, broadening immune responses beyond checkpoint therapy alone. mRNA vaccines have accelerated this progress. Clinical trials combining personalized mRNA vaccines with checkpoint inhibitors show promising signs of benefit, marking a new era where cancer vaccines may complement existing therapies. But challenges remain. Which dendritic cell populations are most critical? Must they be directly transfected by vaccine antigens? Do we need different strategies for priming versus intratumoral responses? Each answer will shape the next generation of cancer vaccines. Today, we stand at a turning point. With big data, AI, and advanced immunology, cancer vaccines are transforming from distant dream to clinical reality. Poised to deliver truly personalized medicine, the future of vaccines is not only about preventing infectious disease, but also about conquering cancer. One patient, one immune system, one personalized vaccine at a time.